Hey everybody, it is me. It's your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and I'm coming back with another podcast episode on the great awesomers.com podcast series. Now this is a long running series at this stage. This is episode number 175, and all you need to do to find show notes and details and some really great uh, notes that you'll, you'll find from today in particular is go to awesomers.com slash 175. Some important links and details that I think uh, everybody will find value in. So uh, here we are. Uh, as I record this, it is the middle of March. The world is gripped with coronavirus mania. Uh, the pandemic is real. And frankly, I, I think a lot of us, um, we're not taking it seriously. I've been kind of focused on this since the middle of January, talking about not going to Canton Fair and talking about the dangers uh, that exist. And again, it doesn't even, I'm not even necessarily talking about my own uh, risk health-wise or your individual his risk health-wise, just kind of the, the general nature of how contagious this is and what the ramifications are. And for all of those who want to keep saying it's the flu, it's the flu, who cares? This is a media or politician overblown, hyped up thing. All you got to do is look at behaviors. I've been saying this really since the beginning of January when I have to say, China, in, in large part, appeared to be kind of downplaying this. That's what they were saying verbally. That's the messaging they were sending out. Yet the drastic measures of closing uh, the Great Wall and closing 70,000 theaters and closing Disneyland, uh, if you ever want to get my attention, you know, close the Disneyland. So the first moment they closed Shanghai Disney and then Hong Kong Disney, I was like, this ain't, this ain't normal. And this past week, all Disney's worldwide have been closed. So if you want to know how serious it is, that's a good example. In Italy, they've closed basically any kind of store that's not a pharmacy or a grocery. And basically, the, you know, any of the churches, any of the uh, tourist attractions, those are all closed because they're, they're suffering now from this pandemic that is uh, gripping so many of us, including the United States uh, and the rest of the world for that matter. So what can we do? Uh, I've been talking about this on Facebook somewhat, but let's, let's make sure that we're not part of the problem. That's my fundamental point to you. And let's be part of the flatten the curve movement, right? This general premise is if we all kind of isolate ourselves and we all are kind of quarantined, then we don't add to the problem. We stop spreading it even unknowingly, right? We don't necessarily have to have symptoms, but we can spread the thing uh, you know, far and near. It, it's a real problem. And that's what makes this particular pandemic such a, um, I don't know, a sneaky problem. Because people are walking around, they're like, hey, I'm fine, I feel fine. And then a day, two, 10, maybe as many as 14 days later, that's when they start showing symptoms. And that's when it becomes a problem for, for everyone. And by the way, some people may never show symptoms, yet they're still contagious. And that's what makes this, again, a very nefarious enemy. So what have I done? I've canceled all my travel, uh, both happily and somewhat involuntarily. <laughs> I was supposed to go to Vegas, then I was supposed to go to India, then I was supposed to go to Germany, uh, England, Serbia, and I, the list goes on over the next uh, two or three months. And pretty much all of those trips are canceled because the events themselves have been called off conferences like the Prosper Show or the trade show in India or the fact that India said uh, we will not issue visas and any outstanding visas are canceled. Uh, and then not to mention the, the travel bans and so forth. So fine. Uh, that's no problem. I, frankly, it's great because I'm not missing out on anything and I get to be focused and stay home and get some work done. And as an introvert, it ain't the worst thing uh, for me. But I really, even locally, am committed to do my part to not be part of the problem, right? I want to be part of the solution, and you should too. Awesomers want to be part of the solution. So how do you help flatten the curve? And what, what curve are we talking about? The curve is if everybody just carries on with their lives, we're going to have an explosion of cases and sickness that will overwhelm the medical community's capacity to deal with it. Whereas if we all just do our best to quarantine ourselves and self-isolate and so forth, even without the government demanding that we do it, even without armed police telling us what to do, we can do this because we're sane 
and we can then flatten the curve. So whatever cases do come in, hopefully come in over a longer period of time and that the medical community will not be overwhelmed. They don't have enough beds. They don't have enough ventilators. They don't have enough stuff uh, to, to handle a blown up situation. You saw that in China. And I'll be honest, China's probably uniquely qualified to solve that problem in short order. They can manufacture stuff, including equipment, ventilators, electronics, whatever. They can manufacture the drugs. Most of the uh, uh, treatments and things like that come from China anyway. So they can do stuff that the rest of the world can't do, including building hospitals in you know a week or two uh, of time. As far as I know, as we sit here in the middle of uh, March, all of those temporary hospitals in China have now been closed, showing that China and all the draconian measures we've talked about on this podcast before have been effective and thus gives the rest of the world a good template. And we do, again, we don't have to you know, have a gun in our face or have any kind of threat from local authorities or federal authorities or anybody to be smart about this. Just stay home. Don't be part of the problem. Let's be part of the solution. And I know it's hard uh, to get deliveries. I know, you know, not everything's working, but it, it, everything you can do to limit your interaction with others and self-isolate and what they call it now social distancing. This is a new uh, buzzword. That's a good thing to do. So again, I'm not a medical expert. I'm just a, a regular human and I'm trying to do what I can do to uh, learn and then share my, I don't know, philosophy, my learnings and my own opinions. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I doubt it. It's so rare that I'm uh, wrong. One time I thought I was wrong, and it turned out that I was wrong about that because I was actually right. So uh, if you can do that circular logic, then you're up to date. So let's talk about what we are doing. So you see behind me, see those whiteboards? Uh, they're regularly filled to the brim with lots and lots of stuff. And right now, they are empty because all of the Day-to-day -day plans and tactics are out the window, frankly. Everything is changing. Um, our long-term strategies are not changing because those can withstand the test of time, but they may be delayed. They may be uh, recalibrated to deal with the economic realities and the, the situation that is forthcoming. So I literally have nothing on the whiteboards behind me. If you're on the podcast audio, you can't see it, but I'm pointing to blank whiteboards right behind my big head. And it's a, a quite a vivid image that I'm painting there. So what does this mean? It means all the plans that you had for 2020, uh, you need to really think about them and consider the timing. I have told folks that I'm not investing in uh, capital type of costs. So I was going to buy another car. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I was going to invest in some other things, general equipment, uh, some upgrades at certain facilities that we have other types of capital investments, and I'm not, not going to do any of that right now. Uh, obviously, the travel I already mentioned, all that's out the window. Uh, cash really does matter. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. So uh, here's something fun we're doing. On uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, 2020, we're going to have a game night. And if you go to awesomers.com slash 175, I will put the link to the game night. And it's some of your favorite uh, Amazon sellers and influencers my buddy Kevin King and uh, Leron Hirschkorn, uh, Andy Slammons, uh, I hate to leave anybody out, Bradley Sutton, uh, I think Norm Farrar is going to join us, I think Robbie Stanley is coming in, uh, and I'm, I know I'm missing somebody, uh, Melissa Simonson is going to be joining us, whoever I'm missing, my humble apologies, I'm not looking at anything to, to give me a, a heads up, but we're going to have a fun game night, and it's going to be like trivia, it's going to be fun things, highly interactive, and you can join too as an audience member and kind of make your own score. And uh, in some cases, the, the contestants on the screen, which this is all be live streamed, you're going to be able to see us, you're going to be able to see the game screen. You're going to be able to kind of figure out who's lying or who's best at trivia or who's made the, the funniest uh, joke. Uh, there's a lot of different games. It's going to be really, really fun. And this is free. It's just kind of a hangout. And since we're missing out on things like the Prosper Show and ASD and so many others, why not have a, a, a fun time? And it's quarantine friendly, right? This is all coronavirus, coronavirus approved. You will not catch anything on an online uh, uh, hangout, as far as I know. <laughs> so that's one thing. Uh, also on Wednesday, uh, which is, I believe, March 18th, 
product savants, formerly known as KevinAndSteve.com, will be doing the big reveal. So Kevin and I have been working really, really hard, uh, as well as a bunch of other uh, players on the, the team. And it's what we're doing is really, really hard. We've been talking about this for over a year. It is extraordinarily difficult. And none of this virus stuff, none of the shutdown in China, none of the anything makes this any easier. But we're going to do the big reveal just so that we can say, hey, this is not some hype. This is not some crazy thing that we've been intentionally doing. It's just really hard. And we're going to tell you all about it. More importantly, we're going to tell you the most important things that Kevin thinks about finding those unicorn products to sell on Amazon. And I'm going to take you through what I think the sourcing process looks like in a world-class organization. No matter who you are, you're going to come away with excellent, excellent uh, actionable steps uh, no matter what. Now, I'll tell you, I see these, uh, we only have 500 seats in this webinar. We already have about a thousand people registered. Usually only around 25 to 35% of people show up. Uh, and maybe I'm a little off on that number. Maybe it's 35 to 45%, whatever it is. If you show up early and awesomers are always on time and always early, if you show up earlier, you'll be better. And we'll put the link awesomers.com slash 175 for the Kevin and Steve now known as productsavants.com reveal. You won't want to miss it because uh, it really is something truly unique and notwithstanding all the, the sky is falling, a world calamity and pandemic, uh, this doesn't really change that because this is something that stands the test of time. Now, I also want to call your attention to um, a, a very nice document that was put together this past weekend by uh, Michael Shinnick from The Business Practice. And to get a copy of this document, again, go to awesomers.com slash 175, and we'll have a link. Uh, or you can go straight to empowery.com slash contact and ask them for, for a copy of the document. This is a free guide from the business practice on the types of things you should be doing right now uh, in the wake of this coronavirus pandemic. We never heard of the word COVID-19, you know, four weeks ago, six weeks ago, whatever it was. But now it is on everybody's mind. It's affecting every single thing that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so Michael took the initiative and he said, what should people do? And how do we communicate that? And how do we do it in a free, non-pitch, non-slime ball way? I see a lot of people doing these emergency webinars. They're going to sell you something you need at this moment. Or they're going to um, I, I just don't like selling fear and I don't like people preying on entrepreneurs. So this is not that this is a free guide. You can get it. Uh, and I think the advice is really good. And let me just start with this point. Number one, point one, focus on cash. Remember how minutes ago I was talking about, I'm not going to buy that car. I'm not going to do some of these capital improvements and other things that are uh, a cash drain. I'm holding that cash. And Michael wisely says from a business perspective, this is critical you got to bring business back to the basic element. Is it generating cash or is it burning cash? And especially, what investments are you gonna make now that will generate cash in the near term or medium term versus just straight burning cash, like it's a big risk. And I think you should be very pragmatic about that. Now, Michael has a much longer uh, explanation uh, in his document. I'm just kind of going to go through the uh, highlights for it, but focus on cash. That's very important. I myself have talked about that. Second is we already agree that cash is king. So get financing in place right now. Uh, for those who follow the United States and, and global governments, the United States has been pumping liquidity um, and they've also been lowering interest rates twice in one week. Uh, unbelievable. Like that's never happened before. They also never dropped the amount like they did last Thursday. That, that amount was, I think, 50 basis points. And, and then they did as much or more again today. Unheard of, unprecedented. What does that mean? It means loans will be cheaper. And that's an important thing. So uh, if you need a loan, then we should be really, really thinking about how to deal with that. And um, when, when I say need a loan, if a loan at a low to no interest rate can help you, then why not get into a cash position that can help you? It doesn't mean you go out and you, you know, have a party once you get the loan. It, it means you use the money and spend it very, very wisely. It means that you put it into things that will generate free cash flow. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. The point is, 
if you or your Amazon business or whatever, you, if you need financing, go get it. Uh, I will call again your attention uh, to empowery.com slash contact. Ask them uh, about their uh, special deal with sellers funding. Um, they also have uh, a couple other deals with some, some financing players to help you get cash. And frankly, they have a, a deal with one of these guys where you just, you can click the button. It checks your Amazon account, your Shopify, uh, your eBay, your Stripe, whatever you have. And it'll tell you how much you qualify for a loan right then and there. And it works more like a revolving line of credit versus just a straight inventory drawdown. So having cash in your pocket so you can deploy for inventory or other immediate needs is very important to consider. Not everybody needs it, but for those who do, let's pay attention. Uh, plan to work from home. E even if you have a WeWork or you have something like that, let's get remote. Let's make it possible. Um, and, and do whatever you have to do to minimize your contact with the outside world for at least you know, two to six weeks potentially. We'll see how it goes in various countries and various areas. But at least two weeks to make sure you ain't part of the problem. And then from there, if you go out, now you're risking you know, restarting your own clock. So let's plan to work from home, self-isolate, flatten that curve. Now here's one, it ain't pretty, but it has to be talked about. What are the staffing changes or cuts that may be necessary? Uh, we don't like this concept, but when you deal with sectors like you know, travel or hospitality or whatever, they can't keep everybody working. So there's going to be a pretty significant unemployment impact sweeping the, the world, frankly. It's been happening in, in China. It's been happening uh, in Italy. It's going to happen here in the United States. Like all these cruise ship companies said, hey, we're not going to sail for the next 30 or 60 days, I don't recall. Those people are now sitting idle. Are the cruise companies paying them? I don't know. I know that there are some companies like Disney saying, hey, we're, we're closing our doors, but we're going to pay our people. Well, that's a big company with a lot of capital. If you can kind of tell your people not to come in for 30 days or 60 days and still pay them, great, carry on. But be pragmatic about what that means for you financially and for you fiscally, because if this goes on for a long time, you may have to make some tough decisions. Now, I think we're in a good time because a lot of your team, a lot of your staff should be kind of gig worker pay for performance. So if they're still delivering, it's okay to still pay them, but you, you coordinate those jobs and assignments with revenue generation activities. And I'll give you a, a hard, Example, when in September uh, 11th, 2001, when the 9-11 happened, within 30 days, we had to make some pretty dramatic staff cuts. Everything just collapsed. There, there was no business. It was just a nightmare. And we had to do that to let the company survive. And as a matter of fact, a couple of the people ended up suing us because they said we were mean to them and shouldn't have fired them. But we had no choice. To be fiscally sound, we had to do uh, you know, kind of right sizing to deal with the fact that revenue was substantially down. Now, we're lucky in the Amazon world, the e-commerce world, because revenue actually may go up because all these behaviors, things that people were getting in big boxes, maybe they're going online and getting that now. And so there's still a lot of upside. This is not all doom and gloom. This is about planning, not panicking, right? There's two ways to deal with this, plan it and be rational or panic and be stupid. Uh, I'll let you decide which one an awesomer would do. Uh, next thing is communication. If you're in a leadership role, talk to your people, talk to your customers. Um, if you're an Amazon seller, it's less important for you to talk to your customers. But if you have regular B2B customers or um, you know repeat customers, reaching out to them uh, either via email or video or, or even personal contact, not in person, but like bonjuros or, uh, you know, one-off videos to important people. This is a fine way to communicate, especially to your team. And let them know what your plan is, that you, you know, have it under control and that you're you know, responding in a, a positive and pragmatic way. Don't overpromise. promise you know, Don't get on there and go, hey, nothing's ever gonna change, it's all fine, because you don't wanna be wrong later and, and give them a false sense of security. And you also don't have to have all the answers. It's okay to go, hey, just so you know, I'm, I'm on the job 24-7. I'm monitoring the situation. We're making sure we establish our priorities of generate revenue, keep people moving, and keep in stock, help our customers. That's the flow, and that's what we want to focus on. And so everybody, please pull together. Let's make this happen. Communication, a really big key for a leader. 
how you choose to do it is kind of up to you, but it shouldn't be, uh, I don't know what to do as the leader, please help me. It, it can be, we're gonna figure this out together, let's work together, but it, it shouldn't be that you are uh, in a panic yourself and asking your team to bail you out. That, that's not a great leader, not a great leadership signal. Okay, keep marketing and selling. Uh, uh, Michael makes a, a fun quote from a guy named Stuart H. Britt. For a business not to advertise is like winking at a girl in the dark. You know you're doing it, but no one else does. And so this is a, a very good point. You know, if times are tough, you still need to advertise. Now you should be really, really watching those metrics, your ad metrics, and you should be really considering um, managing those very tightly. I'm not gonna give you individual strategies here, but I'm not saying don't market or cut back on your marketing costs. As long as there's a return on investment, stay the course. In fact, you may find opportunities to enhance it or increase it or find additional marketing channels uh, that will work for certain products. If you are selling, I don't know, bejeweled llama wallets uh, that are really just a high fashion item, those may not be in super high demand like other staples or you know storage items around the house or, or things that people are more focused on at this moment. So be pragmatic about the potential of your product in the market as we stand now. Some products will hit it out of the park and other products are gonna be, you know, like travel products and accessories right now. That's gonna be a tough business to be in. Uh, we already talked about communication with your customers, but double down on any of your existing customers. If you have B2B customers or repeat customers, don't forget to focus on them and let them know how important they are to you and, and that you're there, as I like to say, at your service. When you think about this, uh, the old adage, you know, a bird in hand's worth two in the bush is what Michael talks about. Your current customers give you the opportunity to earn a sale without incurring the cost of finding a new customer. So you don't have to pay that marketing cost to acquire that customer. You already have them in your database. That's the cheapest cost per acquisition ever. You already paid the money, get another sale, lower that lifetime uh, CPA for that customer. Definitely double down on existing customers where appropriate. Amazon sellers, we don't have that exact same option, but Shopify you do. Walmart, I think they took away emails now, but the old ones you do, eBay you do. Let's be pragmatic, let's be positive. And by the way, that's point eight. Be level-headed and stay positive. Uh, panic and worry doesn't, in fact, help. Finding small wins every day, something small to work towards, some accomplishment, I think is a good idea. And Michael points out, hey, sometimes less news is a good idea. Just turn it off. I know that social media is packed with every, you know, every hour there's a, you know, some update or every minute in some cases. And we all have friends who are like, hey, this is a big conspiracy. And other ones are, this is way overblown. And hey, this is the end of the world. And you just kind of have to tune that stuff out. Uh, in my opinion, is you just keep calm and carry on as the old Winston Churchill quote used to say. And uh, Michael Shinnick with the business practice, his final point is take a chill pill. Uh, it's, this is temporary. Who knows how long temporary is? Is it four weeks? Is it eight weeks? Is it 12 weeks? Is it six months? I don't think we know that answer today. Um, as you analyze the significant steps that governments are taking, China is coming back from a perspective of the factories are starting to come back, but they're still not nearly all the way there because they're smartly enforcing cross-border, cross-city transportation. Even as people cross these borders, they have to maintain isolation for 14 days uh, and a quarantine period. So they're, I do think that in many ways they're doing a good job uh, of that. That said, we don't know how long this is going to be globally. And the fact that so many extraordinary things are happening. You know, uh, I think Delta Airlines in America said they're cutting uh, flights by like 40%. Uh, there, there are so many cuts, there's so many layoffs, there's so many things that will be coming. And I know that most of the government's going to try to swoop in with big bailouts, and that's fine. I, I don't even, I'm not a political animal, so I don't really care, and I'm not here to talk about that. All I can tell you is it's not going to get everybody, it's not going to reach every corner, and there's going to be some pain, financial pain. And that could trickle through the economic, um, all the way, you know, the economic. I don't know, ecosystem all the way through to compressing demand. If you don't have a job, you're not on Amazon shopping for non-essentials. If you don't have a job and you know uh, have no way of earning money, 
you're not going out and, and buying any kind of items that are other anything other than essential. So don't panic. It's it will be temporary. There will be a, a recovery and it will be a rocket ship recovery in my I'm predicting with no basis of data. But I think just like you've seen the stock market in the United States go up and down, up and down. I think some of that will continue. Uh, I definitely don't see any uh, clear exit to that. And I, I think that's our general feeling. If you watch the stock market go up and down, that's kind of the emotional roller coaster we're all on. So again, be pragmatic, pragmatic, excuse me, and try to relax. Don't let this thing get out of hand in your own mind, least of all, you know, starting there and then into your life and into your business. And take care of the ones you love. Be around your family. Um, make sure that you're making good choices and flatten that curve. Don't be part of the problem. So uh, again, I'm going to put some links in awesomers.com slash 175. Uh, as always, my name is Steve Simonson. I do love entrepreneurs and I love awesomers especially. So, you know, stay safe out there. I don't want you to uh, risk the well-being and, and the financial well-being with not just the health well-being of yourself or your families or the loved ones and the people you care about. So do the right thing, flatten that curve, uh, self-isolate, quarantine, whatever you got to do. Let's make this problem disappear as quick as we can. Uh, thanks again, everybody. If you, um, if you have questions, find me on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. I'm going to try to answer more questions than I normally have time for, uh, A, because I'm home, but B, because this is such an unprecedented situation. So I look forward to seeing everybody out there. And You know, hey, you share the podcast. Uh, let's, let's share some sanity and and be pragmatic uh, and level-headed in our approach to this thing. Thanks again, everybody. Awesomers.com slash 175. Go there now and get all the show notes and details, and then we'll see you next time. Bye.